In this chapter, we'll go over the additional features that PadShop Pro has to offer. The upgrade to PadShop Pro gives you several new capabilities. You can drag and drop your own samples into PadShop. You get an onboard three-band parametric EQ. You also get an onboard algorithmic reverb. And there are 50 new presets. So it's time to go pro. In addition to the slick new charcoal colored paint scheme, PadShop Pro gives you the ability to work with your own samples and audio material. These can be anything from one-shot drum hits all the way up to a 10-minute recording. You can use the on-screen file menu tools to load audio. Or you can simply drag and drop audio right from your file system. One trick I like is to use Media Bay to locate the file, then drag it directly to PadShop. You can also drag and drop audio events right from a Cubase project. And here we have the sample editor for Cubase. PadShop Pro will also let you drag a single slice from the sample editor into PadShop. This lets you use the editing power of Cubase to scrub, clip, and prep your sample leaving only the fine-tuning and granular work for PadShop. No matter where you choose to start from, once you have the file loaded into PadShop Pro, all of the timing and shaping tools work the same way as the original PadShop. And once you have PadShop Pro set up the way you want it, you have the option to export presets that contain the granular synth information and samples. This allows you to transfer your sample to another computer system. Click the Menu button to open the Context menu, then select the option to Export Preset with Sample. Specify where you want to save the preset. PadShop will automatically create a Samples folder at this location and save the active sample there. If you save more than one preset at this location, all the sample data will be tucked into a single Samples folder. PadShop Pro also lets you import presets with user samples in them so you can use the presets your friends and coworkers create on your system. You can drag a preset from the Explorer or Finder window directly to the waveform display, or you can use the Menu button in the top right corner and select Import Preset. If you look closely at the Effects tab, you'll see there are now three tabs instead of two. We'll get to the Reverb tab in just a minute. If you open the FX tab, you'll see that you have this routing area which lets you enable the new EQ, the modulation effect, and the delay. Then you also have a Send Style control to determine how much of the signal you want to route to the new Onboard Reverb unit. The new EQ is a high-quality, three-band parametric equalizer, and there's a separate EQ for each of the two layers in PadShop Pro. The mid-range band acts as a peak filter, which means it has fully adjustable gain, frequency, and Q values. The low and high bands act as shelving filters and hence have no associated Q value. Now, if we select the new Reverb tab, you'll see PadShop Pro's onboard algorithmic reverb unit. This is an integrated reverb that works as a global aux effect. It can be fed by the two layers individually, which allows you to add reverb to one layer, while keeping the other layer dry. You can click and drag in the reverb display to modify the parameters, or you can enter the numeric values down below. Pre-delay determines the amount of time between the dry signal and the onset of reverberation. Higher pre-delay values will simulate larger rooms. The low, main, and high time controls set the decay time for the low, main, and high frequency reflections. If you're working with long decay times, trying to simulate a large hollow cathedral, and you find that the low end is getting too muddy, try dialing back the low time value to clean up the mush. But leave the high time value alone to maintain the illusion of size. The low freak and high freak values set the crossover points. This is how you pick out what pad shop will consider low and high. The high cut is a standard high-frequency roll-off similar to those found on most digital reverbs. 
Attenuating the highs slightly will add more realism to your sound because high frequencies naturally die away more quickly in the real world. Finally, you have global controls for size, width, and level. Size is used to control the dimensions of the simulated room. At 100%, you'll get an algorithm similar to a cathedral or a large hall. At 50%, the dimensions are roughly that of a medium-sized room or studio. And at lower settings, you'll get something closer to a booth. The width control is used to adjust the stereo image. At 0%, you get a mono output, and at 100%, the signal is fully stereo. The level control works as a master return level for the amount of reverb applied globally. All right, let's take a quick listen to some of the awesome new presets that come with PadShop Pro. Thank you. 